today, instead of focusing on specific questions with you, we're going to talk about some, some bigger issues. And yeah. one we're talking about today is about uh, aversive training methods. So we're talking about shock collars, um, I suppose the, this, the general way of you know, either physically or mm. mentally intimidating a dog yeah. into doing the right thing. Well, animals generally. Or animals in I pick, uh, we, This links in with the animal's Asia thing. Because yeah. you know bears obviously are beaten and they yeah. use the ring through their nose to pull them yeah. to make them do things. So I figured it was a perfect example. You know, unfortunately, there are still a lot of people. I spoke to a client only last week who was using an electric shock collar on their dog to make it come back to them. And I thought, crikey, <laughs> the whole point of coming yeah. back to you is because you want to come back. <laughs> I mean, I did, I did um, a couple of films or a couple of programmes with The One Show um, yeah, you did. Over, the, over the years on electric shock collars. And these, you know, it was really clear to me that how unpleasant they were. And I actually did, um, I tested a shock collar. And I think we can have a, a when they've stopped nattering in the background, <laughs> we can have a picture of that arch it, can't we? Do we have a picture, a picture of, the of the electric, electric shock, shock collar on the one Sorry show? Sorry for that, <coughs> nattering away. Um, so yeah, the, the electric shock collars were, um, you know, they're, they're really barbaric. And I tried one, and you can see the reaction I had here on the one Did show. Did it hurt so, a lot? Oh, it was awful. And this was only on four out of ten, and I just put it on my um, thumb here. Um, and, you know, I just leapt off, and it just, you imagine putting that around your neck yeah. and applying it to a dog, it's just barbaric. But mm. I had in a previous film I made for them, um, we, we talked to uh, someone who was really pro shock collars, and they were saying, you know, there are some cases where it's the only choice and it means you don't have to put dogs to sleep and it saves the cattle and the livestock and all that. And I didn't quite buy into it. And I was also on that film with Sarah Fisher, who you know well, yeah, she yeah, was putting in the counter. Point yeah. and saying actually there are no circumstances where it's really necessary. Mm. So what what what's your sorry, yeah, I, I, no no yeah, it's good I th and it's really good open discussion because I think the, the pro shock collar person you spoke to is absolutely typical of those owners who are desperate. <clears throat> you know, they think they've tried everything because they've maybe got you know pretty dumb advice previously or advice that's not been efficacious or not enough support through the problem. And they're pulling their hair out because the problem's so bad and they think, right, we'll just slap an electric shock collar and mm. see if that works. And I think probably most owners, if hand on heart, don't love <clears throat> the idea about doing that. But if you think about it, historically, it's sort of logical that we've ended up with electric shock collars, isn't it? You know, because you used to, if a puppy jump or a dog jumped up, you used to slap them on the nose with rolled up newspaper or squirt lemon juice in their eye or and pinch the their ear. the thing is, it works, ear. doesn't it? Yeah, of course I mean, it does. The thing is, it, I mean, it does, you know, you tell a dog that's doing something and you give them a, you know, clip around the ear. Yep. It works. Absolutely, uh, just as it would do with humans too. You know, positive punishment, pain and fear, they work to modify behaviour. The problem with animals is that it's not as effective as it is with humans. And either way, you know, this comes down to two things. Number one, if you don't have to cause pain and intimidation and fear, if you don't have to, then why do it? You know, because that mm. makes you a pretty bad person to opt for the bad stuff if you don't have to. And secondly, it has significant long-term impact. Um, whereas positive reinforcement and I mean it's always it's called this positive and, and, and punishment kind of divide mm. you know and people talk about pro and positive yeah, trainers yeah. and it's not that it really just is science you know it comes down to what science has told us over the last 30 years of learning about animal behavior that actually we don't have to be nasty to them to get them to do what we want and it means that long term but they even trust in those you really intractable you know you've got a dog for whatever reason it wasn't trained it wasn't socialized well someone's taken it on as a rescue dog you let it off the lead and it goes and maims a sheep uh -huh. you know and they've tried everything they've tried clicker yep. train doesn't work a shock collar runs after sheep <laughs> zabs it and it stops. I mean, I, I'm the, not advocating it for a minute, but the just thing, that point of argument. Mm, but the thing is, it might stop it short term. This is what I'm talking about. Long term, it causes so much damage and it never, ever, there's no evidence to, to, to suggest that positive punishment works for a long period of time because it ruins the negative, relationship. Negative. Positive punishment. So you're giving oh, positive punishment, yeah, yeah, yeah. punishment as opposed yes. to positive reinforcement. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so, so yeah. giving a, 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 a nasty, aversive punishment. There's no evidence to suggest that aversives work long term because it destroys everything else. The dog doesn't trust you. They're constantly fearful of you. I mean, God, can you imagine a relationship like that at home with a dog that almost flinched would, every time you lifted would your? Say, kind of, isn't that the right relationship? You know, this kind of idea of subordinate and dominant. You mm. know, the dog knows his place. You know, he's scared of me. He does what he's told. And I guess for, maybe for working, you know, in Back in the days when dogs were, you know, working dogs on a farm, mm. maybe that relationship was more appropriate, or, or even then, would you say? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> the, yeah, I collect old books. That's one of my hobbies, and one of the oh, things I love I'll have doing. To come around for a great evening with you. Is <laughs> or Scrabble. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Scrabble don't in the dark. Me. Don't overexcite me. Don't overexcite me. And one of the I'm things I collect is, in the dark is old. 
<laughs> is old dog animal training books. And I've got quite a lot of old dog training books. And the old you know, methods that we use were if your dog didn't come back to you or didn't, you know, in order to teach them to pick up, you'd pinch them in the ear. You'd grow a nail really yeah. long and dig it into the dog's ear so it hurt them. Yeah. And as soon as they did what you wanted them to do, you'd let go. Another punishment, for example, if the dog gets a little bit rowdy, <clears throat> I used to know there's a paragraph, maybe I'll bring it in next week and I'll yeah. read the paragraph in the book, it's, it's hilarious. If the dog jumps up or steals your food or growls at you, you should grab them and submerge them in water until the near point of collapsing and then yeah. take them out of water. And this was a normal, like common book. kind of thing? If they survived, then they were a bad dog. Well, it was that they... you shouldn't kill them. You right. should drown them to the near point of death so that actually where they learn that you know, they did really badly. I mean, it's just barbaric, but that's the way that they knew back then. Mm. And this is what I keep coming back to is that, yes, it works or can work, which it doesn't exclusively work, I have to say, but if after 30 years of scientific research, we found a more effective, efficacious and kinder way to do it, let's not forget why did you get the dog? Mm. I mean, there's people all over the place like um, police dogs and farm dogs, working dogs. You know, they don't teach dogs like that so much now. Um, no. so, so times have changed, obviously, an awful yeah, lot. Absolutely. Um, fascinating to hear your thoughts and um, we've got a, a, a post on our Facebook page um, uh, just where you can post your comments on on shot collars so um, let us know your comments and be interested mm. to join the debate and we can carry on that after the what would be really interesting is if anybody at home used to use shot collars or they've you know put their put their hands up and say you know what I did slap my dog once to mm. not do it or I squeezed his paw or you used aversives but now you don't and compare the two, because I mm. guarantee if you're doing it properly, all the positive reinforcement methods that we use for all animals, you know, we deal with all mammals, I'm dealing with elephants at the minute who are flipping awesome to do stuff with, it's much more efficacious and works much better. So uh, no flaming though, don't tell people off, you know, we all have to start somewhere. So if you used to use an electric shock collar and now don't, let's praise those people, don't tell them mm. off. I've got a comment here from, from Nicola who says, um, where are we? Um, terrible barbaric devices. Um, there are always better, kind, more kind of methods. Totally agree with Jez in that they may have short term fixes for some dogs, but long term they can cause so much damage, both physical and mental. I think, to be honest, we all agreed with that, haven't we? I mean, yeah, I um, would hope, but um, there are but, still but people. There are, and there are people who put together a strong argument, counter argument. So it's always. An, There's an interesting argument I once heard in a debate where somebody said, oh, it's not an electric shock. It's just like a TENS machine. Uh, and I said, try it. I've tried it, and <laughs> believe you me, it's an electric shock. I said, a TENS machine isn't an electric shock. A TENS machine is an electric impulse to tense in the muscles. And, and that's, even those, have you ever tried a TENS machine? Yeah, they are pretty like... Yeah. Yeah. Aren't they? <laughs> but an electric shock collar is an electric shock. It delivers an electric yeah. shock. That's Doesn't how they're meant to work. Yes. Yeah. I think we're just saying there's another comment on there. But what we'd like to do is keep this discussion, because we're going to have to mm. wrap it up now, but keep this discussion going on Facebook. Jez is around for the rest of the day here at yep. Best so Jez will be um, keeping up to date with that Facebook and, and yep. replying to your comments on there. Um, we have another one here from Amanda who said, I'm against them. I think it's barbaric to train a dog by using pain. Positive praise is the way to go. What wonderful viewers we have. Yes, we do. Yeah. Well, well, of course, because yeah. they're watching this. Exactly. Um, <laughs> So uh, thank you very much, Jez. Um, we are going to call that a day now, and we go because we've got a fantastic guest coming in, mm. um, who is Sarah from Animals Asia. We love um, Animals Asia. We love it. Fantastic charity. We're going to find all about about all about that and see a, a new film of it later on as well about some of the work they're doing in Vietnam. Um, but first of all, we've got a, a short film just showing uh, what happened last night when we previewed or we premiered their um, mm. the Cages of Shame film here at Vet Clinic. Uh, last night. So let's see how that's um, how that went last night, and then we'll say goodbye to Jez. See you next week, and we'll see Sarah. <laughs>